six eleven on February Monday, February tenth. We're going to go ahead and start the um, transportation and, and um, facilities meeting. And um, Kevin Stroke is here for the board. And Mr. Biggerstaff, Steve Biggerstaff, Director of Facilities. Rob Hurley. Kathy Hayden. Okay. And there's, and there's a few in the audience. So um, let's get started. All right, so good evening. Um, on the board agenda for this month, um, I've outlined a lot of topics to discuss. Uh, the first one was the district office move to the high school. Uh, that is about 98% complete. The only thing we're waiting on now is uh, the finish of the FOB installation um, at door 22, door 9, and district door 1. The hardware is in. We're just missing the final connection to the server. Um, and an A phone, which should be completed within the next week or so. And then that project will be completed. Okay. So it's like two fobs and a phone? Two fobs and an A phone. That's the silver, you can push the button, you can talk, and the person on the other end can see you and communicate so we're right. in the building. The next update was for the high school paving project. Um, the RFP is almost complete. In fact, I'm meeting with uh, Boyer Engineering tomorrow uh, to take a look at some of the spots that they've outlined where we need some extra work around inlets and, and other sinking areas. Um, so we're going to take a four building tour tomorrow to look at the project. But he should have estimates and stuff by tomorrow for us. So I'm hoping to get that um, to the board at next month's facilities committee meeting. We, um, in the past, have going and gotten estimates and then publicly announced those estimates and then we put it out to bid and if I'm a bidder I'm just going to listen to the tapes and kind of get an idea where you want to be and come back at it. Is that legal for us to change that process so we don't have to publicly announce where our engineers are coming in and allow these bidders to come in with a blind side? Not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, I'm just trying to make them you know, come in, I, you know, my, in my businesses I've never bid a job and had an idea what the customer was looking for in terms of money. Mr. Boyer suggested we use PenBid um, because he, he's used that with other municipalities and school districts. And he suggested that you get a bigger pool of potential bidders, which lowers the price as well. Um, I'm not sure if, if, the, if we've ever done this in the past where the prices or the estimates weren't shared. We did not. With a concrete project, I did not tell anybody what the... I, I didn't, they asked what my budget was and I said, no, I'm not giving you Right. Okay. So we've done that in the past, but we can ask supers just to firm that up to make sure that we don't have dollars out there. Yeah, I just want to make sure that when we're in our meetings and our committee, the whole, or in our, in our in, that we're, when we're talking about this stuff, that we leave the money off. Um, that's all. So, yes, sir. It's just a thought. <clears throat> um, how did we make out with this, uh, the parking? Is we still good with what we have? We're, we're fine with what we have. Okay. Um, I had to put it in there both ways just so we get an idea of pricing. Okay. Um, my only concern with back there at all was the fact, you know, we need some close employee parking. But the other concern, too, is truck movement in and out um, for different events and stuff so that we don't have any kind of any issue. But you'll be able to see price with and price without okay. to be able to make a fair decision on what, you know, the board's expectation is. The RFP should be, what do you think that we'd be, have that out for bid by? We could probably go next month. By next month, in okay, March. And the same thing with the Mason Air. Or sooner. Because that came in my email this afternoon. Yes, for the that project. Yeah, the Mason Air at Birdsboro, that's pretty much ready to go. So we had it on our calendar for next month to get it out. Okay. Do you want to do both at the same time, or? What, your RFP? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I got a food right. service that'll go with it too. Yeah. Got it. Come on. <clears throat> okay. So the next issue on the agenda is the high school courtyard project, and that's in scheduling. Um, actually, working with the vendors that were identified uh, to complete the project before spring. So we're just waiting for a break in the weather. Um, the, the identified contractor, I believe, is Solid Rock Landscaping who's actually contributing and give us a big discount and they're working with wellness in order to pay for the project. So we're gonna make sure our end's ready for them whenever they need to go and um, 
I think he's just preparing and kind of waiting on a break of the weather. That's great. So every month I put on this looking forward for maintenance section um, as a talking point, just to kind of bring the board up to speed of where we're at with looking at, at maintenance going ahead. Um, preventive maintenance, we really haven't, we've had some spots, but we, because of the stagnant uh, maintenance issue, we haven't gotten as far as I would like to see, um, as far as changing belts and updating and taking care of equipment, filters and whatnot. Um, the idea is to be ahead of the game and making sure that we're doing these things on the requested and needed uh, maintenance cycle. So the two maintenance people that we have right now, most days we're running, running repairs, and we schedule that as we can in between. And I'm not saying we're not making progress, we are, but it's just not at the, the, the correct intervals, and I don't want to fall behind. So I, I put that on there as a talking point just to bring it up uh, that we do need more maintenance people in the section. Is there anything that's, um, that you're concerned with, like a belt snapping or filler I mean, that's always running a clogged? You know, when, when I listen to this unit here, you know, obviously that there's probably a small issue with it. We prioritize stuff based on what's what's coming in and what we right. see, basically. But we're not ahead of the game in any means, and we still need to get there. Uh, the next thing on my list to update is the facilities uh, maintenance district five-year plan. Um, I have that pretty much compiled. I'm just gathering pricing now. And then obviously I would take it to Dr. Cooper and Mr. Hurley to look at prior um, to bring you forward and then um, making sure that we have the money and I'm not pushing the envelope too much, you know, just so we're not trying to go too far too quick. I don't want to overspend and, right. you know, so I want to make sure that that's in line with Dr. Cooper and Mr. Hurley want to do it. So I don't see the whole picture, I only see my part. So I can ask for anything, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get it. Um, the cafeteria equipment plan, I, I put this down in here um, simply because we dropped the steamer, which you'll see later on in a month, um, or later on in, in the agenda. We dropped the steamer recently at the middle school. Um, one part of the unit, it's a, two, it's a two separate unit piece that was original to the building, um, so it's probably about 10, 12 years old. We, the steamer went because there was a scaling build up in the back. We had the unit cleaned. We, we actually did it in the house, and then he found a small hole in the back of the steamer. Um, but a lot of the problem with that is the fact that we're not having this stuff independently checked by a company that specializes in the equipment. Um, we can do maintenance on anything. You can tear anything apart that has a belt, has a compressor, whatever the case may be. You can repair it and put it back together. But we don't always have skilled people within the district that know or experience with refrigerators, walk-in freezers, and stuff on the maintenance crew that we have. Um, so being that looking at it going forward, it would be better to have a third party gradation done. They basically come in, they look at all your equipment, and you don't have to do it annually, you could do it biannually or every three years, have someone come in and give you a gradation report. And what that helps us do is spend the money that we do have more effectively and replace what's needed, rather than just saying, well, you know, my temperature control in this oven, or it looks old, you know, they actually break it down and inspect each piece of equipment and then make a determination with recommendations <coughs> so that we can plan out replacement of, of that equipment. Um, it's hard for me even to look at it because I'm not in the industry of cafeterias as much. I can look at it as a piece of equipment, but it's better to have someone who deals with this all the time. Um, so they gave us two price quotes for it, which I'll submit. Um, you for can the, a new steamer? The steamer itself is 17000 um, it's an expensive piece of equipment, and there again, I don't think it was being maintained as efficiently as it could have been um, over time. And that's without install. That's just a steamer. That's just a steamer. It's a two two person two thing unit. And this is in the cal cal cafeteria. Cafeteria at the middle school. Okay. And this for what? And I think we found out about this Thursday. It's that the original steamer that was in there when the building was built. Yes, sir. Yeah. We have a lot of equipment in the cafeteria. That comes out of Fund 50. It's, not, um, it's yeah. Fund 50, and it's a it's yeah. capital expenditure, right. and it's pretty yeah. broken out. Yeah. They were 30000 to the good last year, just to kind of give you an idea. Okay. Yeah. 
And we did, in, back in December, I developed a cafeteria repair work list, and together with Interstate, and in some cases Clark, we've had them come in, and we've knocked that, that down that list significantly, um, to the point where now we're just trying to fix the small stuff, shatterproof bulbs and freezers and, right. and line servers and stuff like that. So I don't see or foresee a lot of expense going forward for equipment replacement, but it would, however, be frugal for us to look at it and try to get it ahead of time rather than waiting till it drops and then having to come up with a cost that we didn't expect in going forward in the future. So... I do see a value both ways, and, and the list that the vendor gave us is kind of uh, you pick kind of a situation. He threw a lot of extra stuff on there that I don't think we necessarily need, like the concession stand and, and other areas. We could just simply go with the four main kitchens and the equipment that we struggle with, which is convection ovens, walk-in freezers, and steamers. <coughs> Some of the people take care of our freezers. Did they come and maintenance them? We maintenance the you, filters oh, and, and that such, but when it comes to refrigeration, like I'm learning that uh, I came from somewhere where we had people that would you know do the work themselves inside. So when we look at doing a recovery of, like if you wanted to work on a freezer unit, do you want to get to the point where we're recovering R22 and the recycling of that cost and everything? It, it, it would seem in our best interest to think about that as a third party exercise simply because of the environmental impact it has, making sure we're following the process right, also putting out, you know, looking at the costs and making sure that we're not endangering anything with the equipment. A, the thought of a guy taking it off. Shh, no. Exactly. Like, <laughs> you know, woo! <laughs> kind of thing pops in your mind. And I just, you know, I don't want to. Absolutely. So I, I so think you, about Are you it's putting about together you. then, if I'm hearing you correctly, your, the kitchens, some type of out third party? Thing that so we can incorporate that in the expense of the, of the budget is that the idea we can their their contract with us and i believe for the hot side it was 4200 for the cold side it was 4800 is their pricing but that's with the concession stands and everything else put into okay. it if we limited it down we would probably drop that number even more and then the idea would be was be a sort of echelons of maintenance so first level normal taking care of descaling uh, working on the equipment, replacing bulbs, stuff like that can be done by the maintenance contractor we have. And then anything that would rise above, like a refrigerant leak, um, heavy duty compressor replacement, you know, gradation of the convection oven through the steamers would be done by them. Um, Does that change our maintenance agreement then? I don't know how it impacts because when I read the interstate agreement currently, it's very confusing to me because, oh, like, just for an example, like when we look at power washing, when we talked about that last month. So when I go into the contract, there is power washing in, in the Halters contract, there's power washing in the interstate contract, which means there's a necessity for both on both sides. But when you get in deeper and you think about it, well, the Halters contract does say power washing, the in, interstate, excuse me, says, you know, clean walls and scrub. Well, when you envision that, you have to think about the, the industrial relations of the equipment and what we're doing and the processes we're in. So some things, yes, should obviously be expected that we should be able to do with our technicians or our personnel. When it comes to a certain point, though, there are things technical that you need to go above and beyond where you have to have a contractor certified to do the work. And we can't provide all those certifications <coughs> to the people that are here, um, and we can't expect that by their contract for them to be able to do all the, all the parts. So I try to make an evaluation where we're best going to spend our money. Um, you know, and then there are other things that come in line too, like we approved, the board approved that train contract. So over the spring break, we're going to put four units on the main gym and do some work over here. And we're bringing up uh, Tracer Ensemble, which is a new work order system that's going to be fantastic because we'll be able to see everything live and control things as they're like moving. Is that the main software? Yes. Yeah. So we ended up going with a maintenance software. No, this one incorporates it, and it came with the purchase came of with, the equipment with the train. Right. I gotcha. This was in progress before I got here. Gotcha. And I believe Casey it, or it Kathleen. all has to be tied together anyway. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize I had it yeah. in there. No, Great. it's it's in there. So it's like I mean, Prego spaghetti a, sauce, isn't it? Right. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to be bugging Scott to see if I can get some iPads for my maintenance people coming in the future, uh, so that they'll be able to see. Just like I can see when I look on my laptop, you can actually watch the units running, see the motor spinning, making sure that your pressures are good, and 
So those kinds of things coming along will make a big difference to save us money going down the road. Um, but there, you know, you do still need third-party contractors when it comes to major electrical or HVAC work. We're not going to be able to get away from that, and I don't think anybody can really. So that's kind of where we're at. And then I believe anything else on there. Um, oh, I do want to. I'm trying to work on a summer maintenance plan for this year. Just ideas. Uh, just to bring everybody up to date on what areas and stuff, just out of normal, not like normal cleaning, because usually they break down the buildings pretty well. They'll pull everything out of the hallways and clean. Just concentrating on areas that we can and maybe some stuff we can do in-house to reduce costs um, so that when the school year comes back in, we're 100% ready to go. So I'll, I'll probably try to introduce that by April uh, to Dr. Cooper and Mr. Hurley. So, you know. the, on the one that you sent me, you had the annex weight room doors. I do have that on here as well. Okay. Um, now we had pricing given. The doors have been a, like when I went back through the the drive, I looked. The doors have been an issue, and they're on the five-year plan, and they're in there as well. Um, however, two of those doors are for the weight room, the auxiliary weight room that's next across from the annex. They're not repairable anymore. Um, we've had issues with students getting in there when they're not supposed to be. Um, which causes a concern because someone could be hurt. There's equipment in there that could get somebody hurt. Um, the doors themselves, when you look at them, have been chopped many times. They're original to the building. Uh, the cost came back, I believe, at 13385 13, to replace two sets of doors. And the reason for that is because they're continuous hinge because of the structure and framing and because they have to be panic doors uh, for fire emergency plus fire break doors. So you're paying more to replace what's in kind. Um, and I can't, I don't know, we could try and shop that around to see if we can get a better price from another door company, and I will do that just to make sure we're not being, you know, um, put the threshold for bids and that stuff. No, 18.9 is above RFK, but they okay. need to get three unless they're on co-star. Right. Three mm -hmm. prices unless it's on co-star. Yes. Right. So, you know, we might Just get a lower it's price. Just because doesn't mean you can't negotiate a price. So right. this is something that needs to be brought up tonight? Um, I mean, we've had some issues with students getting in there. You know, my concern is for uh, kids getting in there like, supervised. And right. That equipment out here, the last thing we need to do is get one of our kids hurt. So I would say, yes, that would be something to priority. Now, you, you also have on there uh, the Annex Gym Doors. Yes, they, I did get a price for them because I had them here. I asked them to give me a price on those three sets of doors. They're in kind, same as what's on the Annex Gym, original the building, but um, the price on them was high, and I wasn't going to put them as a priority. Um, that is something we could be done with our five-year plan. Uh, I just want to really handle the, the two are they, sets are of they doors. Not, are they broken now? or they just The locks don't really lock anymore, but... It's it's wow. it is for the main it is for the gym so I can't see kids being in there unless someone knows to turn the lights on. Um, it doesn't have the equipment that the uh, but oh, the all weight the rooms right the danger room yeah absolutely. Plus there's no more bleachers there. I'm on one. Right, <laughs> they're not there they're anymore. Not there. <laughs> right, so it's not as much of a safety concern as the weight room. I got you. I'm going to have to see the cost not to exceed what it is. We're going to get a couple more estimates. Yeah, but yeah, cost not to not yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's what I thought. Um, I would say the two items that take board, I'm assuming the steamer is pretty, uh, pretty heavy heat right now. And then there's the board. Do we have, a, this do we have a not to exceed thing. for the steamer? So we can do price it. For the steamer, 17725 I believe. No labor. Is that, is that good installed? That's everything. Oh, yep. okay. Soup the nuts. 17,000 what? Seven? 725. And then the annex were 13. 13, 13 385. 385. And there's one other thing I want to see if you could bring out. We have um, Halter, who's here. They are have their equipment stored in two, two garages. They're not paying for that space. That wasn't in the contract. It wasn't anything. So we're setting, we want to set up a lease with them. We went back and forth in price. I've dropped it to $3 a square foot. We kept going back and forth. He wants a 
500 a month, which is a little less than $3 a square foot, and I said it would be all inclusive. So it's up to the board to decide. We can have that conversation. I think that if we look back at all the stuff they do for us for nothing, there's an awful lot of times that they volunteer <laughs> to pull stuff out from behind sheds. I don't want to explain the billing. Pardon? We're, we're being charged for all that. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, we can go over billing. If okay. You want to go over yep, billing. I'm good. But we're um, definitely we we're definitely getting charged for a lot of you know everything um, that they're doing. Yep. But this is uh and it's a liability concern because their equipment's inside the shed. Right. So we want to make sure that we're covered and there's uh, electricity and um, heating that's going on. So we just want to make sure that we're. Yep. Would you have it down for? Um, five hundred. Yeah, we talked about six hundred, but then he came back with five hundred. So five hundred. 500 a month, and that'll cover all the utilities and the lease of the space so they can keep their equipment right here. Are there heaters in there? No. Well, that's the heaters <laughs> and the electricity. Right. Yeah. There is. The maintenance shop. Yeah, it's a maintenance shop. So if you shop. go by there at night and there's a big TV on the wall and the heaters yeah. are running, you know, I, I just want to, you know, <laughs> electricity not to exceed. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's beds moving in there, constructing walls. <laughs> so we want to just make sure the board's okay with that. Yeah. yeah and then I want to be able to, you know, go with, with Subarus and get the lease drawn. I am. I mean, I just, you know, just, you, you always worry about a precedence of somebody else to rent anything out. To, you know, well, that's the problem that is stuff. we don't want somebody sitting in there in a space that we're not leasing when we're leasing to everybody else. Exactly. So, I, so. I mean, I get it. Um, it makes sense. And so let's... You know, we'll just bring it up to them. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. gotta do something. So, yeah. um, CoStar bleachers and playground equipment inspection funding request. It's um, well, what I have is a quote that came from CoStars, and it's it's sent to us. Right. Um, it's just an annual inspection of our bleachers and uh. playground equipment. Um, should probably be done because I can't find record of when it was done last. So, um, no record of when it was done last year. Well, I'm sure it was done yeah, yeah. because they, I think it, it was generated. I just can't find the actual physical records. What's the normal said. time frame for doing uh, those? Annually. And it, it is due. We just recently did all those repairs to the bleachers out in the football field. Ah, oh, the football field. Oh, over here. All the yeah, metal football so. bleachers. How, how did we find that if we didn't? Is that just something that was found by the maintenance people? Were they not inspected? I mean, I'm sure. I, I, like he I said, I'm sure that, there was an inspection. I don't mean it that way. I'm not yeah. saying there's no inspection. I mean, I don't mean yeah. it that way. I mean, I just I wanted to make sure the yeah. inspection wasn't done. Right. But this is inspecting the bleachers inside too. I got you. The yeah. pullouts, everything. Yeah. It identifies. So that needs to be brought tonight as well. Is that something for the media? Um, it, it can be now. It can be done over the summer. I don't believe we'll it's zero price. Yes, three thousand sixty nine dollars. Three thousand sixty nine. And that takes care of all the buildings. Takes care of an inspection of all the equipment in all buildings. In all the buildings. That can be an expense. You almost have to do it annually, right? Yeah, we can do that next month. If you want to it account. doesn't. It's on good either it's way. A liability. It's a liability. Yeah, absolutely. It's a liability. Now, now that we brought it up, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, now that we've made a public thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just know it needs to be done. I, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I nope. think that needs to. Be yeah, I agree. <laughs> Good. No, they're good things. They really are. So the annex gym doors, we're going to wait on those. You're going to, that's going to become part of your plan, right? Um, I mean, it's in the five-year plan already. So, I mean, we know it needs to be done, but obviously it's a gymnasium. And if the building's secured on the outside, there shouldn't be much of an issue. Right. Plus the basketball start. So, I mean, volleyball start. And people are gonna be, it's just probably not a bad idea to get a stamp of approval. Kind of, kind of like an elevator being inspected. <laughs> I mean, I have to be honest. I can't, our gyms here get used a lot. They do. I mean, I never knew that or realized it. Like any, like any. Yep. They, they are in use every night, every day, and we're a living, breathing organization, as they say. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I don't really have any other questions. I mean, I, I was concerned about the software maintenance because I believe we, we talked about there's other yes, maybe, potential I, other options out there. I know, did, before we after, make the after I found that out, I stopped <clears throat> yeah, all... Just, for now, search. You know, in the software that we have now, we, do, we currently use any of it at all. 
Uh, we're still using ML work order system, okay. and I mean, it's not a perfect system. It doesn't give you everything you want. Okay. But if we're just talking about dealing with plumbing and door issues and stuff, I mean, that will suffice. And our no backlog, the last question is the backlog. Where are we at backlog-wise for the buildings? Uh, well, I keep throwing work orders in there every day. So I keep, they keep is there anything, get, keep is there anything old? Like I remember last year, Mr. Sports just come to our meetings. And last I saw, we were at 67. 67? 67, 67, 67 open right now. Anything really old yeah. that you're waiting on? Not yet. We're just about to get in because they're talking about that. So now we get it. The interstate is the last item. <clears throat> yes. Oh, that's the last one. Okay. Jumping in. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Interstate has made some progress, custodial-wise. If uh, I believe they brought on four new people this month, um, but there's a big ball drop coming. Basically, um, at the end of February, would you know, close to the beginning of March. There are four people short. Or they brought, they, on four they people. brought four people on this month. Um, at the beginning, at the end of February, beginning of March, the current they have current verbal agreement with halters who is supplying personnel uh, for the middle school cleaning to assist them in getting up to speed. That contract will come to an end, and halters men will go back to taking care of football fields and baseball fields and doing their normal duties. So there's still that looming over all of our heads coming up in the future. And When's that contract end? Uh, I believe it's the beginning of March. So although we brought four people on... Maybe in March. Okay. So although we've brought four people on, we still have this crisis that's approaching soon because we're still going to have, have to be expected to clean buildings and keep things going. Um, so that's still looming. <coughs> uh, the hiring of maintenance people, we had one person start today. Um, I did not have a chance to meet the individual. We started around 10 this morning. He was working with Kenny Templin, who's one of the other uh, maintenance people here. Um, but we are still far behind on maintenance work, and it's tough to get anything done other than running repairs most days um, or emergency repairs. How many are we short? We've been short. We've been with two since I got here in November, and we're still at two. So I, don't I think know, I, that's fifty percent. I, I can't. I don't. I can't card it. So we need four. So we're too short. We we are we're contracted for four. Okay. Um, and I would say we need four at all times at least. I would like to see more than that, but uh, you know, I'm contracted again for thinking four. about myself just for sanity's sake. Well, um, we're contracted for four, and one's going to bring us up to three. One will bring us to three. That's okay. correct. So there is some hills to climb here for interstate. Um, I know uh, we've, we've talked about it. We've had to supplement our maintenance work out to third-party contractors that probably could have been done in-house uh, simply to keep the district running. And for that reason, Kathleen has uh, made up this sheet, which is showing their billing right. and what we build them back for work. That we were trying, you know, trying to be reasonable, not saying it's but we paid out a lot of money uh, recently for Berkshire Mechanical and plumbing companies and other stuff in order to supplement repair needs. It's not only it's not only just the work that we've contracted out. You're talking the hourly rate, which I sent over to um, her name. But I sent her how much we're going to charge for a maintenance person, how much we're going to start for a custodian. The fact that he's managing the staff because the manager wasn't in the house all the time. So there's an hourly rate for him. How many hours do you spend managing their staff? How many people were short? How many hours? Because you can look at the contract and see exactly. So this is not only, and then halters, there's a lot of halter hours in there. Even though halter was working for them, they were also doing some maintenance stuff for us and custodial work at, at certain points. So I went through and I took the bills, and you can see from the maintenance perspective, that's where most of the money's lost. Right. Um, we're already 88, almost $88,000 we've deducted from their billing, and that is only from October, November, December, because we gave them July and August to ramp up. September, we sent the legal letter as a warning, and then starting October, I started deducting. They owed us in December for so maintenance. So September and October was when the letter went out? The letter went out in September. Okay. 
we gave them a break. We said July, August, September, there was no deduction from any of their bills. We didn't even consider it. We sent the letter as a warning in the month of September, and then we decided to start deducting in October. Because it's just getting out of hand at this point. It's costing the district way too much. Now, I don't know how far you want this conversation <coughs> to go. I mean, I did put in the email into Subers. Is that okay? I put the email into Subers. A recommendation, just a recommendation, this is a board decision, um, is maybe stick with interstate on the custodial side and maybe dump the maintenance contract, maybe RFP for an electrician, uh, HVAC plumber, and maybe two general. Just have them separate or something, but something needs to happen because my understanding is even though the staff is coming in under maintenance, it's not a high grade to where some of this stuff, even though it's written in the job descriptions in the contract, they need to be able to be competent enough to do these things. The people we're getting aren't up to speed. That's correct. <coughs> so we even... talked to Subers yeah. and with the performance bond. There's, there's, and there's all things. Language is language. It's in yeah. there. We can get out. Okay. <clears throat> the question I would have is, is that when you separate the two, you know, um, to make sure that we're whole on the maintenance side, because sometimes you balance things out there a little bit. Maybe you have a little bit less of a staff quality, not just quality, but a, a level, a person to be able to do this in both areas. And so we you know, pack this side up, make it whole, and we're left on whole on the maintenance side. That really doesn't help the overall. So you'd have to be a, there'd have to be some math done there and some balancing act um, with the RFP to, to make sure that we're going to be left whole versus somebody being able to come in with both, right? And I, I, I'm, it's not, you know, I'm going to take... It's a discussion. Uh, yeah, it's a discussion. I want the recommendations, you know, what you want to do. But um, at the end of the day, there, my comments back would be, let's be careful, because, you know, I've separated contracts before in the past, and I ended up with a short contract over here, and so it didn't help me out at all. It really kind of hurt. It is a concern. <clears throat> and so, you know, I don't know how they... If, it, if the RFP, when they originally bid it, if it's separate, if all that stuff's separate already... Um, maybe yes, it might be okay. Um, so, no. We'd have to explore basically, and we'd have to make sure that we're getting what we need if we're going to take those steps. So, yeah. it's it's more over looking at what we can get for what we're paying, and then making sure that there's some crossover. And can we have an RFP where the people bid both? If we're going to keep them separate, let's bid both, right? Anyway, just for the sake that you know, we could take a look at maybe doing, you know. Um, just the, the work stuff needs to get done. This is like a re for me. It's like a repeat of with GCA. It was the one thing we didn't want to have happen. I feel like we're reliving it. And so. we just don't want it to go out too far. Oh my gosh! Yeah. It's going on already too far to where this is a lot of my time. Right. It's everybody. All time. this billing. I mean, you've got the hours in, but the fact that he can't even get caught up. Everything's an emergency. Everything's a fire. He can't even plan or right. or, or or get ahead. No it that's the problem. problem. That's where we're at. He's been here. And it's just, and it's again, it's not, it's nothing against the interstate. It's just a contract. No. It's a contract. I'm looking over and build a fireplace at your house. I can't stop halfway up the house. Or you know what? I don't have any labor. Uh, you know, my masons didn't have enough cement, so they they left the they left the cement out, so we use sand to build the rest of the chimney. It's just, it's a contract. It's just, it just is what it is. You know. So, and um, I just didn't want it. We didn't want it to go too yep. far because we're already behind the eight ball, if not further. We've got summer cleaning coming. We've got summer projects coming. We've what got would, all this. What so. would we need to do to get RFPs ready? And, and again, making no decisions, just to have the conversation <clears throat> so that we can take a look at what our options are so that we can make an informed decision versus an emotional. Just a recommendation from the board? Or I don't, I'm only one like guy a, here. There's nobody else well, with you. Well, you'd have to I bring it out. Okay. You'd bring it up at the committee of the Absolutely. whole as a discussion <clears throat> item at the end, you know, yep. at new business, saying okay. that this is what we would like, and what would the board like? How would the board like us to proceed? So, is it okay? Yes. Yeah, so do you agree then that you would like to have an RFP? I mean, what is it that you you would like to do an RFP for just the maintenance? You want to get an RFP for both, and we can still leave the custodial alone. Then at that point, it's still a possible possibility for us to do that. I um, think we should consider both. Okay. Because we may in the end get a better quality by separating the maintenance but it might not be that you get enough people to bid it yep, gotcha. so i think we have to consider both great just um, so we don't shortchange ourselves or i, I was a there contract. i was actually there last month because 
only because our first meeting that we had when we started, and, and, I, and I understand that there were some problems that we didn't know about, but we were short back then, and the plan was is for them to come in on weekends and evenings, and they weren't allowed to. So I felt bad for them. I mean, it's like, you know, hey, that's not their fault. They were we promised something that. that didn't happen. Okay? Yeah, we corrected that. And, and so it got corrected. Um, and so, but now here we are. It's, it, it's February. I mean, it's, it's really time to, to make a decision here. So. Just because you shouldn't have to deal with this on a regular basis. It's, it's a, <clears throat> and I get it. I mean, businesses have problems, but it's not the school district's fault. Right. So. It's just the I'm relationship in. is not working out the way we need it. I'm in. And it really, we can't put students or staff at risk because things are not being done. Great. Bring it up. And it's okay. If they've got a plan and they've got a schedule and they want things to happen, we've been here since September. That was when the letter went out. Right. Yeah, February. And, and yeah. I did I did actually pay them and we did have video yeah, of so them sleeping. But I still <coughs> I didn't I didn't take those hours off. Lovely. That's where we're at. Okay. <laughs> so it would have I to be brought out to the committee of the whole yep. as a suggestion. Yep. I will bring it up. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody no, else? Anybody got anything? No. Okay. Right. Hold them. I'm sorry, can you come on? Can you come on up? Yep. I don't want to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. Please no, no, come no, on up. We want you to talk. That's where we leave yeah. it at the end. You're good. Okay. And who are you? Uh, David Beats. David Beats. Okay. Yeah, the Director of Educational Services. So, um, aside, I know what you're going through with Donna, the payroll, and all that. I wish I could help more with that, but I can't. That's, I know. That's you know, that one. That's why I get it. <laughs> um, just following up with some of the stuff that I spoke with Stephen and Rob about. Yeah, we've had issues with payments. It's clear in the numbers. So we had a new guy start today. We're currently waiting for an individual to come back with his child abuse. That's all we're waiting for. And then I'm also posting for a maintenance supervisor. So it's not necessarily we need, we're not supposed to have five here, but I'm trying to get an additional person here just to alleviate the stuff that's kind of backlogged at this moment. And then once we get to where we need to be eliminating some of our issues that we have with stemming right now. Um, <coughs> currently, custodial is full. We're full with custodial. We have the agreement with Alters Group. I've spoken with him on what we're going to do in terms of if we hire additional people, giving him enough notice to where he can let his crew know in a week or two weeks, look, they're going to be filling this position. That was the agreement we have with them. We have six people going through right now that we're waiting for, all based off of the fact that they're going to be exiting the building <coughs> and we're going to have to fill those positions. Um, outside of the maintenance issues, I, I know things are written down contractually in terms of what the maintenance people are supposed to provide. Our maintenance guys that we're providing, I'm going to be honest with you, are general maintenance employees. They're not a master plumber, they're not a master HVAC, they're not a master electrician. Kenny's not a master electrician, he just knows electrical. Scott, the same thing, he's not master HVAC, he just knows it. So. Going after that pedigree of an individual has a lot more substantial cost than getting a maintenance guy for what is needed here on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of those bigger projects, yeah, we, we just can't do them with the staff here. One, it's a liability, and two, the amount of skill set that goes into that, the guys can't provide that. You know? I, I don't want to cut you off, but I'm gonna, I want to comment in between some of your yeah. comments if you can. Were you here during the bid process? No, I came out at the end of the bid process. The end of the, I, I was here during the GCA and during the bid process, and quite frankly, that's the third of things we brought up. Mm -hmm. You know, are you guys going to be able to handle this? <clears throat> and, and the overall general board was they wanted to try and stay local. My concern from the very beginning was is that are we going to just be recycling some of the people that were here before <clears throat> because we're local, and mm -hmm. do you have enough horsepower behind the company to be able to bring people in when there's a problem? <clears throat> they were the concerns I brought up. So, sure, no, no problem. We'll be able to do this. And two, when we do a maintenance bid, contract a bid on something like that, <clears throat> it's nice that somebody knows how to do electricity. You know, <clears throat> um, plumbing. You know, hot on the left, cold on the right. Mm -hmm. um, waste does not run uphill. I get, I get it. But that's not what the bid. That's not what the contract, the bid's all about. I mean, if that was the case, maybe it should have been brought up during the contract period. That you know, hey, we're not going to 
be able to supply you a plumber. My concern is code, you know, especially with electricity. I mean, somebody's somebody knows electricity. My brother knows electricity, but he's not wiring my house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're in a public school environment, so those things are very bothersome to even hear. But I, I understand it. I really do. <clears throat> but it just it, maybe it's the wrong fit, you know. And again, I think from September forward, and I'm just I get you know September a letter went out. I mean, we talked about this back when the school year was starting, mm -hmm. you know, your president was here, I think it was, yeah. he assured me, this is my problem, this is hands on my shoulders, I mean, I talked to him, I have his card, <clears throat> I'm like, great, you know, I, I want to see it work for you, it just, would you agree that it hasn't? I would agree, yeah. Yeah, not, so, not you know, so that, you know, so, and I, and I appreciate you, and I, you know, I want to, I'll, I'll let you finish, but <clears throat> understand that, you know, that's what we, we all talked about, we, that we questioned those things, you know, are you going to be able to bring people in, are you going to be able to have staffing and all that. No, it wouldn't be a problem. We were going to pull from other areas, and you know, we're doing this school, and we're going to take from there if we had to. So, I'm just, I'm just regurgitating what we were told. Yeah. You know what I mean, so. And like I said, yeah. I, you know, versus what he told or what I'm saying now, I'm not going to say. Yeah, no. And, you know, and, and, and once bit and twice shy too. I mean, you have to understand, we came from a bad relationship, yeah. right? And so you know, when you scratch your head, I go like this because I used to be beat. No, I'm kidding. You get my point. So there, yeah. there's some once bit and twice shy things going on there. So no, I know. That's why. That's yeah. where. That's where a lot of this. Come from. No. No bad feelings towards any person at all. Just it's just not getting done. And no, we went through three years. Of, it's just not getting done, you know. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so I think it, you know. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But well, I was just more or less going into the things that I'm trying to do versus you know what the past is. I understand what the past is at this point. Yeah. We're well beyond the fact that we should have fixed it. <clears throat> I can't take that back. Right. Um, at this point, I can only say that I'm trying to do what I can to try to correct it as much as possible. Um, going into the custodial aspect again, Lori is interviewing on a weekly basis. We're not just hiring for open positions. Uh, basically, told her we got to send people through constantly. You know, part of the issue is, and it's our issue: background checks, child abuse. People say that they're going to pass; they don't pass, and it's a two to three week process that we go from hiring someone to finding out that they can't work for us. Right. But again, our issue, which is why I have her interviewing and hiring on a regular basis. We're also bringing in an additional custodial supervisor in the evening because we're having a lot of issues with not necessarily coverage, but just enough oversight in terms of what's going on here at nightly. Yeah, I need more people in the building to make sure that <coughs> cleaners that we're supplying to you are actually doing what they're supposed to do. Is there a process inside your company at one point or another, at week's end, once a week maybe? I think daily, and when, we're, when you're having a problem, you look at it daily, but on a weekly basis, there's a checklist. Somebody walk through and go, hey, didn't do that. Hey, didn't do that. Hey, and, then, and then fix the problem, or do we wait till Stephen goes through, or one of the building managers goes through and says, hey, I got a dirty whatever, and it gets put on a back. No, we, we have inspection sheets that Paul is <coughs> doing. Uh, Stephen's actually also doing them, and we're trying to get set up where they walk the buildings together at some point to provide a little bit of open communication in terms of what what his opinions are versus what her opinions are, so we can kind of get on the same page and have the same idea in terms of scoring. Um, part of why I'm bringing in an additional custodial supervisor is because of that lack of oversight. So it's all falling onto Lori to make sure that these things are happening, but we need these regular inspections and follow up on a daily basis. So yeah, we do have them. They're not happening nightly. I mean, I know she's doing them on a weekly basis, right. which is kind of where I want her to be at, but I need the person at night doing them as well. So we're getting double of the, you know, coverage and inspections done. I'm currently doing them bi-weekly. Pardon? I'm doing them bi-weekly. <clears throat> right. Again, I just, I, I just know that, you know, we shouldn't be doing them at all, I'll be honest with you, but you do. You walk through the building, you see things, and so, and, I, and we appreciate the, the effort, we really do. And we understand the problem, but, so. No, I know, yeah. I just wanted to, you know, this is yeah. up here and let you know what we are doing versus right. just what we're not. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. No problem. Okay, are we done? Okay, that ends the facilities meeting, and the time is 6.56.